probably about 6.45 in the morning. I don't know, this is my uh, third or fourth clip today. I'm not even sure what uh, order I'm going to be uploading these in. Beautiful morning, thunderstorms. There's my Blue Bay Shepherd Kurgan. Right here we've got uh, my Lycan Shepherd Ulu who's 14 weeks old and uh, German Shepherd Lobo. We're uh, over in St. Paul today in the uh, Crosby Farm wetlands location. I'm in a section of trails that uh, I've never uh, filmed before on my channel. I mean we hike it pretty regularly but uh, I just haven't gotten around to filming this section. Beautiful section of trails. Hello. Come on. Come on. You can't see her. She's uh, in the mud right here. Let's take her out. There you are. I thought you were behind us. You were right in front of us there. Kurgan and I thought she was behind me in the mud. Man, it is just beautiful. I love the rain. Love, love, love the rain. Come on. Good girl. All the stuff you see on the side here, all the stuff here is stinging nettle. It's got lots of medicinal properties. I'm fortunate in that it doesn't really affect me. I can touch it and stuff and it'll make me itch for a second or two, but that's about it. Some people, it'll, it'll make them itch all day. It doesn't bother my dogs at all. They have been running through it since they were puppies. The whole river valley's full of it this time of year. Come on. I'm also, as uh, I mentioned in uh, some of my prior videos, lucky enough to be one of the 15% uh, of people that uh, is immune to poison ivy, so I don't have to worry about that on my hikes either. A lot of people don't realize that some people aren't affected by poison ivy, that it's uh, just an allergic reaction to the oil in the plant. I think the oil is called Urushal or something like that. But it doesn't affect everybody. Which I think makes me immune to poison oak and poison sumac too, but uh, I'm not sure. I've been exposed to those that never gotten it. But uh, I don't want to expose myself intentionally to test it. Just a beautiful morning. Got the whole valley to myself. Mississippi River is right over here. Let's take the dogs over there and let them get uh, cleaned up. Lobo has a really soft coat. And unfortunately, it's a magnet for burrs. Everything seems to stick in it. He's full of burrs right now. Probably going to have to spend a half hour ripping him out of his coat when we get home. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Good girl.
Right there is the mighty Mississippi through the trees. Get to a spot here where we can walk down to the beach. Come on. Good girl. Go to the river. Target, pull him. Come on, Ulu. Good girl. Well, right here's the uh, mighty Mississippi. We're currently on the uh, St. Paul side of the river at the uh, Mississippi Regional Park, Crosby Farm location. Over on the other side here is St. Paul also at this part of the river. As you go down river farther on the opposite side of the river, you run into uh, Harriet Island and uh, the brickyard and all the caves down in that area. Up ahead here on the river, this thing right here, that's Pikes Island. Off to the uh, left side of it here, that's the Minnesota River where it uh, enters into the Mississippi, the confluence of the two rivers. And uh, over on this side around that bend there, that's where the Mississippi goes. I've uh, filmed quite a few videos on Pikes Island. It's got a pretty grim history. I've uh, mentioned in some of my prior videos. I'll give you a brief synopsis of it. Uh, after the Dakota Indian Wars, Pike Island was used as a prison island. They kept something like uh, 1,200 Native Americans on there, mostly uh, women, children, and elderly. And uh, during a particularly harsh winter, uh, like 800 of them or so died of uh, exposure and uh, cholera and starvation. It's pretty horrible when you think about it. I could be off a little bit on the numbers. It, it might be even more. This whole river valley is haunted. And uh, I, I don't say that tongue in cheek. I've seen lots of paranormal activity uh, up and down the river in this location. Especially at night. You'll see balls of lights going through the trees. You'll hear uh, voices off in the trees. Uh, laughing, crying, screams. Uh, You'll hear stuff moving through the woods and, you know, there's nothing there. It's a really cool place. It's got a lot of history. I love coming down here at night. I usually don't film my night hikes, though, because uh, it doesn't make for very good viewing. All you see are a bunch of shiny dog eyes running around. Come on. Ulu, come on. See a bunch of clams here. Somebody or a raccoon or something was eating those. That's a freshwater clam in the river. The seashell, that's what all this white stuff is all along here are clam shells. Wouldn't you love to live in uh, some of those houses and apartments up along there? What a beautiful view of the river valley they have uh, year round. Kind of a neat little overhang uh, up underneath the trees here. You could sit underneath there if it starts raining too hard.
I think I'm going to have to retire my uh, Converse after this hike. I uh, blew out the whole side of my shoe and now my shoe is full of rocks and pebbles. <laughs> All right, come on. This way. Hey, this way. Come on. Uh, the rain's starting to come down harder again. One. Give you the panoramic 360 of the area. See if I can get a good shot of them jumping over us. Come on. Come on. Well, that was uh, rather anticlimactic. <laughs> that was. Come on, Bo. Bo, come on. I was looking for a good thumbnail. Come on, Ulu. You can do it, sweetie. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Tell her how to do it, Kurgan. Come on, Ulu. Over or under, what's it gonna be? Come on. Come on. Come on. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl. I don't care how you make it, just over or under. Both are good. Again, in situations like that, you don't want to coddle the puppy. You want to encourage them to uh, solve problems like that themselves and build confidence. At least that's my opinion.
Come on. Rain's starting to come down harder again. It's kind of a long walk today. We've probably done about four and a half miles. I'll check my phone pedometer when I got home. When I get home, it could be even a little farther. As you can see, Lulu's doing fine. Still got some spring in her stride. I let the puppies go at their own pace on these walks. I don't push them. Well, this video's gotten long. It's a little over 15 minutes. I think I'll wind it out here. I hope you guys enjoyed the hike. I'm not sure if I'll film another clip or not. I'm tempted to because it's so beautiful, but uh, I don't really have that far to go. And it all looks like this for the next uh, 20, 30 minutes. I'm not sure if people want to continue to watch 20, 30 minutes of this. <laughs> all the same dense greenery all the way back to the truck absolutely beautiful though I could spend the day just uh, absorbing the atmosphere here I love it hope you guys enjoyed uh, sharing this morning with me on one of my uh, morning hikes hope you guys have a great day like subscribe and share hit that little notification bell down below and uh, You'll get email notifications when my new videos come out. That's all. Bye. Bye from Mr. Lobo. And bye from Mr. Kurgan. And Miss Ulu.